SOLIDWORKS has tools which allows you to use existing geometry and model as the basis for new geometry in a sketch. In this lesson, you will learn about the Offset Entities and the Convert Entities tools. Offset Entities selects existing geometry and offsets it by distance you specify. Convert Entities creates geometry by selecting existing geometry and projecting it onto the active sketch plane with relations that ensure the geometry created will always match the projected geometry. Convert Entities creates geometry by selecting existing geometry and projecting it onto the active sketch plane. It also adds relations to ensure the projected geometry will always match with the existing geometry you're projecting. These are both powerful tools to use in SOLIDWORKS as they allow you to leverage the existing geometry in the model, which means that if the original geometry changes, the new geometry will automatically update to reflect those changes. To begin, we'll look at the Offset Entities tool, which allows you to pick existing geometry and then offset it by a given distance. You can start this command by either going to the Sketch tab and then Offset Entities, or you can go to Tools, Sketch Tools, Offset Entities, or you can push S on the keyboard and go to Offset Entities. There's a few options available here, but we'll cover those in a moment. At the moment, we just have the Add Dimensions checked and everything else is unchecked. To actually offset an entity, you can do this in two ways. You can either left click on the line and just drag it out to a position you want, or you can specify an amount first and then click on the entities you want. Also, if you click on the entity again, it will remove the selection. Let's take a look at some of the options you can use in the Offset Entities tool. The first is Select Chain. Select Chain will just make sure whatever lines are connecting, it will select the entire chain. So you can kind of create a loop or a single entity selection without having to pick each one. We could just pick Select Chain and pick one of the tool, one of the entities and it will pick all of them for us as long as they're connected. Another option is Reverse. So if you wanted to reverse the direction, you could click on this. You can also reverse the direction by just moving your mouse onto the other side and clicking it. Then we have the bi-directional option. If we tick that, it will mean that it will create the offset on both sides of the entity. And with bi-directional selected, you also have the option of cap ends. So if we tick cap ends, and I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see, but you'll notice it completes the profile by adding these two cap ends. And you can either have it set to arcs, so it's gonna create like a circle, or lines, which is just gonna be a straight cut across. So this is a good way of creating a uh, custom Customize slots if you needed a slot with this particular shape. That would be a very quick way of drawing it is just to do the lines in the correct positions and then offset and cap the ends. And the final option we have is base geometry. So with that selected, it's going to make the original entities that we offset, it's going to change them to construction geometry. And the benefit with that is that construction geometry is ignored whenever you use it to create features from a sketch. So if this line was then construction geometry and I wanted to extrude that, it's just going to ignore that construction geometry and just extrude the outside profile. Also, because I had add dimensions checked, whenever you complete the command, it's going to drop in these dimensions for you. So this allows you to easily edit the offsets in the future if you ever need to. To change the dimensions, all you need to do is just double click on one of them. A dialog box pops up and we can change that to 30 and it's going to adjust it automatically. Or we could drop that down to say 10 millimeters. If we didn't have add dimensions selected, then you would have to manually add the dimensions afterwards, which would then allow, give you that control in the future to make any modifications to the offset. Here we have a little spinning top I've created, which we're going to use as an example using the offset entities tool. What I want is a, uh, a cutout at the top of this, and just so it recesses in, say, five millimeters. We can use the offset entities tool to do that. To begin, we'll create a sketch on the top of this surface, and we will use the offset entities. We don't want bi-directional, we just want one direction, and we'll reverse that, and we're going to make it 10 mils. Click OK, go back to our isometric view, and we will then cut this profile. Five mils is fine. 
And there we go. We now have our recessed cut in the top of this. But the beauty of the offset entities tool is that if we make any future modifications to this part, that 10 mils we set with the offset geometry is going to stay with it and stay at the 10 mils. So if I was to change this to 200 millimeters and then update, you can see it's now increased the size of the spinning top, but that 10 mil recessed cut is still 10 millimeters. Moving on, we're going to use this part to demonstrate the Convert Entities tool. Convert Entities lets you take advantage of existing geometry by copying it onto the sketch you're currently working on. This is useful because the copy geometry will automatically update if the original geometry is modified in some way. Here we have a part which has some holes on the back plate here, and we want these holes on the other side. The issue we have here is if we want these holes to go all the way through, and we can edit this feature, change it to through all, you'll see that it's going to cut through the existing geometry. So we don't want that. We just want the holes on the other side and, and for them to match this side at all times. What we can do is instead create a sketch on this back plate, and I'm going to rotate a bit just so you can see what's happening. And we are going to use the Convert Entities tool, which you can be found on the Sketch tab, Convert Entities, or of course the Tools, Sketch Tools, Convert Entities, or of course the S for Shortcut and Convert Entities. And with the tool activated, we have a few options here. The first is just a dialog box, which shows the uh, geometry you've selected. You also have select chain, which acts the same as the offset entities. So it's just going to pick any lines that are connected to create a chain loop. And finally, inner loops one by one, which will just select all the uh, closed loops inside the profile. And closed loops are like uh, circles or uh, ellipses. So we want to for these circles to be projected across. So we can just pick this uh, face and then go to select all inner loops. So that's going to pick all our entities for us and we'll click OK. And you can see that the geometry is being projected across and it matches exactly as it would on the other side. Also, if you click on this circle, you'll notice a relation that's being created here, which is the on edge relation. And this is a special relation, which means that entity, that sketch geometry is being projected from somewhere else and it matches whatever that geometry is. So for example, if I was to finish this sketch and we are going to use that to create a cut. We're going to change that to next and click OK. So we now have our bolt holes on both sides. But if this was to ever change, say the diameter will change to 20. Click OK. We'll update that. And you can see all of them have been updated on this side as well because of that on edge relation is matching whatever's happening on this side. So that's the offset entities and the convert entities tools. You'll use these a lot when you're sketching, especially the uh, convert entities is very useful whenever you need to copy geometry from somewhere else onto a, a sketch that you're trying to build and you're using some sort of previous geometry to bring that towards it. It's very useful in that case. Uh, the offset entities is also very useful when you're just trying to create uh, recessed edges or some sort of like cavity, you can quickly use that to bring it in without having to dimension things. You can just sort of do it in one step. So they're both very powerful tools because they do leverage that existing geometry that's available in the model.